Today's adventure begins as the recording of this Sunday, June 4th, 2023 from my hotel room. Just atop Universal Studios Hollywood, looking down upon the theme park and the movie studio with so much history. Bright and early, well not even bright, it's just early and very cloudy. A little dismal and overcast at this moment, but the sun, once the sun starts to rise, should kind of burn off a little bit of this haze and fog. I am doing the VIP tour, as shown here. A VIP tour is like a time machine. Now, I've done the VIP tour at Universe Studios Hollywood before, but every time is a little different. I'm hoping today I can go down to Courthouse Square and possibly some other places that I haven't been to in a while. Exclusive access to Hollywood awaits. It's very early. 6.30 right now. The tour begins at 7.30. So I'm going to go ahead and start heading down there. Also, this is the valley. And there is Super Nintendo World down there. I'm inviting you to join me. It's going to be a fun day meeting up with some friends. Also from my room, you can look down and you can see some of the old trams that are right here in a parking lot near the freeway. The old Universal Backlot trams. The, the tour, tour trams, I should say. These relics of the past just sitting down there. Right here on the corner of the Hilton. In proximity to the park itself. There's the front entrance, there's the globe, there's City Walk, there's Wizarding World. See the globe right there. Hello, fishies. It is early. Good to see the leaf blowers out. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. It is about 20 minutes now, by the time I got from my room, down to the bottom level, about 15 minutes till 7 a.m. Hour tour, meeting up with a couple friends, begins at 7.30. Who knew that they were, they were doing a tour this early? Gonna get coffee over there. And I think the theme park opens at eight. They have, they're getting close to their summer hours. Opens at 8 a.m., so the first tour, we're thinking maybe we will get a little bit better access and the fact that it is a Sunday, you might be able to see some stuff that you don't normally see because there might not be a lot of filming going on. So leaving my hotel room and heading in, I'm inviting you to join me, shall we? Got an Academy Award from The Sting. Should also mention Big Bake on the Move is also here. He will be doing the tour as well. And then over here, got nerd locations. You getting, uh, getting some juice? Getting some coffee with ice. Coffee with ice. Ice coffee today. All right. You ready for this? I am ready for it. So Are we all awake? We're ready. I'm not <laughs> caffeinated yet. Let's get caffeinated. Yeah. And then over here, there's all kind of light snacks. You got all these croissants. You got the smoked salmon croissants. You got the tartlet over here. You got the danishes. You got the blueberry muffin. You got the chocolate chip cookie. Of course, they got water over here. They got citrus. They have some, oh, these are eggs over here. And they got some fruit and whatnot. All this is included on the tour itself. Maple and brown sugar oatmeal. And when I think of the tour, I always think of, you always think of a Frankenstein and, uh, and Hitchcock out there. Hitchcock would be proud of the tour. And there's this little area up here with the Phantom of the Opera sign over there, a lot of photos. And here is the coffee that I'm going in on. And this is the bus. So we're going to be getting on VIP 705. All right, welcome aboard our VIP Super Trolley, folks. And let's give a big round of applause Super for our driver, trolley. James. James. Yeah, absolutely. Without James here, it's a really long walk, folks. Like a Lord of the Rings style long walk Ooh, everywhere. Lord of the Rings. Our whole property, our theme park and studio. It's a different franchise. Just under 400 square acres. Is it Lord property. of the Rings a different franchise? If we were to walk all of that, we'd feel Lord like a, a little bit of our metropolitan set area. 
can be just up the way here off to the left side of us here. Can be made to look like any major city across the world or across time simply based on how production that rents the space from us chooses to decorate. All right. So we just what redress the them over and over and over we're again. We're going to go back here. We can use them over decades, over um, hundreds of productions. Nope. Any superhero movie fans? Two hands back there, that's a fan It doesn't look like they're theater. filming back you there. You see the Lyric Theater just over there, that big marquee? I don't know why we're not getting side. out. That's where Mary Jane Watson was performing her big Broadway debut in The Importance of Being Earnest in Spider-Man 2. Peter Parker tried very hard, very, very hard to get to the show on time. He was a little sidetracked, he had to swoop in to save the day of Spider-Man. Got as far as the theater lobby before the usher turned him away. Just yeah. upholding theater policy. I don't policy. see any production no going on back there. Started. Happen right there. Kind of hoping we go back. We're going to leave the concrete jungle behind and head towards a different jungle altogether. We also have Magnum P.I.'s Ferrari from that great show starring Tom Selleck. We have some Back to the Future vehicles as well. And just please remember to remain seated at all times, guys, for safety. Thank you so much. We got Biff Tannen's convertible, which looks and smells a lot better since it cleared out all the manure. Futuristic vehicles from Back to the Future Part 2 that pair very nicely next to these prehistoric ones featured in the Flintstones of John Goodman and Rick Moranis. All right, I'm a little disappointed. For my Wizarding World fans, this is the Ford Anglia. They didn't even like, take us back there. There's like no the filming even happening back there. But car from Harry Potter you just never know what you're going to get on this tour. It's really hoping And a little back further down to those the gyro. Flash. Flood. The result of thousands of gallons of water being pumped down the hill and recycled all the way up to the top. In sets, we call them six points. It has that name because it started off as six interconnecting western street sets. That meant in the early days of silent film, they There's could film six different Hollywood westerns right here. at the same time. Never had to worry about sound carrying yeah. over onto yeah. another's production. That's where Leonardo DiCaprio I, myself, was sitting right there. I, myself, am a very big fan Leo of was sitting westerns. right there. And my favorite part of any Western that I happen to be watching, uh, I'm just a really big fan of the fight scene. There's, I think, the earthquake is stopped. Oh, oh, hang on. Bad news. Looks like the water main is broken. Yeah. This area is going to flood quickly. We can work on getting out of here. That, my friends, is Earthquake and Big One and the special suburban areas of our property, including Elm Street. So, so far, we're just doing the basic exact tour that you can do. The house on the end, Yellow House, Green Earth, that has belonged to Boo Radley for our classic We're not going into Court House Square. We're not going to the western side. I'm guessing there's going to take us to the right side. You'll see this White House. It was originally inside of a sound stage for a musical adaptation of the Best Little Horror House in Texas, starring Dolly Parton and Burt Reynolds got relocated to our back lot when they were done filming. But in just a moment, the we're going to make a nice little stroll down Colonial oh, Street. Sweet. Early best so I haven't like driven down Colonial Street in a while. Geico, progressive state now, if we don't get off here, i got to be honest, then I think the VIP tour, what the payment is for this time, would not be worth it, in just my own personal opinion, because they're not filming anything back here, so I hope... I Even hope to goodness back, we are getting uh, off here. We had a former resident on this one of these houses, uh, Ronald Reagan, for his movie Bedtime for Bonzo. I know you're thinking, Ronald Reagan, the actor? Nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> who's, who's vice president? <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Lewis? Lewis? Let's put Jane Wine, the I first lady. That. I love that. Now, some more recent productions to shoot here include Never Have I Ever, our continuation of Quantum Leap on NBC, our upcoming TED television series turned this area into Boston. I do want to point out this yellow house coming off here to the right. That was Susan's house on Desperate Housewives. Right, so just a couple of seconds. Just a little bump of a hair shot right there. Right next to it, that lavender house. Why are we house, not getting off right here? There. That is the Munster's house, 1313 Mockingbird Lane. I just missed the Munster's house. And uh, I do have to point it out, it's a really fun 80s comedy from us here at Universal. This is Mayfield Place. This is the street in the Burbs with Tom Hanks. It's a really fun movie. A majority of the action takes yeah, place right here It'd be nice right if we could get off and actually look, look, and look around like the VIP tour actually the promotes that we're supposed to right do. There. They don't really deviate from Mayfield Place in the entire movie. What the hell? Now, we're going to head a little further up the hill. Really? We're not even starting at the, the plane rocket. Usually, I mean, usually this is like the textbook cliche walkthrough. But we're not even going to slide. I think we're going to stop here either. Or the psycho house. We're going back to Colonial. Then we can go back to the escapism, the fantasy of it all. You know, just one and done. One and done. 
But yeah, fast exit theaters right now, folks. Oh. Really pumped about Maybe that. Not. I've been seeing Vin Diesel talk about how this might that be was the house start of, That was a, in Best Little Horror House yeah, and also in house, house of a Thousand. That was the house from House of a Thousand Corpses right there. The real house was based on is in Pflugerville, Texas. As we head back down the road here, passing by Elm Street once more here off to the right side, if you saw a movie with Will Smith called Hancock, makes a superhero landing right in the middle of Elm Street right over there. He pays a visit to Jason Bateman and his house right there on Elm Street. Will Smith movie, I heard it slaps. And, uh... As we pass by our Jaws attraction once more, if it looks a little familiar, you might be a fan of a long-running series called Murder, She Wrote, starring yeah, Trey and Joel Lansbury. Let's see if I can bring that up for you right here. There. Back to walk around You're seeing outside of our western area with some farming equipment, boxes, barrels, crates, So I've done this tour. Signage. This is probably my fourth or fifth time. And usually they let you walk around a lot of spots, especially if they're not filming. Anything that can be added and to sometimes they'll say, oh, they're filming back there, so they don't let you walk around where they're filming. The there's no, the I don't see any filming happening today. So it's kind and of we're actually going to be heading next to our first VIP excursion, something that we've not had access to for several years, and only recently, over the last few months, we've gotten that back access to our prop warehouse. You can't film in the prop warehouse. I'll take you through our first floor. Are you, are you happy? I'm happy, man, but for... For the amount of money? The amount of money, it's like... You're not, we're not seeing anything. I expected a little more, man. Also, Mary the Girly Girl's here, also. Yeah, I didn't introduce you on the way in. That might be important if you guys All you want to see is you want to get a photo in front of the psycho house. Some people say insurance story like that. Maybe he'll take us by there. Uh, any Tarantino fans? Yeah, maybe we'll go back by. Quentin Tarantino? Yeah. Alright. He made a movie a few years back called The Hateful Eight. There's a scene in that movie where Jennifer Jason Lee's character finds a guitar in the cabin hiding out. So at least I'm not the only one has done this before that realizes this is so far it isn't anything extra than what you would get other than there but we weren't allowed to film inside there which is understandable but we haven't been able to walk around but I'm assuming we're going to walk around a little and probably court a miracle. What did you want to see today? Hill Valley. I wanted to get off this bus and go see some things. Yeah, what did you want to see? Colonial. Colonial. Or Hill Valley, either one would be great. Something. This is my first tour, too. I had such high expectations. We're going to go inside a, a soundstage, though, that I don't know what's been filmed in there. He's going to demonstrate why a soundstage is soundproof. Oh, yeah. Are you excited? I do like soundstages. Except I don't know anything that was ever filmed in here. It's all like they just opened it like a week ago. It is very quiet though. It's moving magic. So what are we hoping? What are we hoping for today? To make this better? I would love to get on the uh, Hill Valley, man. You That's my the most important thing we need to get our first recording of is the dialogue. Four seasons, you can stream it on Peacock or Netflix. It's so good. It's also the original Kingdom of Zenobia from the Princess Diaries 2 at Royal Invasion with Anne Hathaway and Julie Andrews. There's also sections of Port Fuga and Port Royal for the first three of this is Pirates of the Caribbean. All right, that's Port of the Caribbean. nightly. But if it's one thing this area is known for, it's known for its monster movie history. All the big name monsters miracles. about their start right here. Dracula, Frankenstein, the wolf man, and it doesn't the look invisible like man who's right by those lampposts on the left. Thanks for looking. I appreciate that. He's invisible. That's what makes him so scary. I have a favorite so, part Ryan, of those monster movies. This is basically the, you're not getting like off this. of the tram for anything. So you got Elm Street up here. Right. So that is where To Kill a Mockingbird was. Boo Radley's house is right over there, but I don't think we're going to be able to walk over there. House of a Thousand Corpses up here. Right. And also Dolly Parton. Um, best little whorehouse up there. The opening of Murder, She Wrote. Is right through here. Right here. Okay, that's kind of neat, seeing the, seeing the shark fin from this side. I just think Angela Lansbury walking around right here. Great Angela Lansbury. I'm not sure if they if it was in this spot when they were filming it, or they moved these sets to here, kind of like they did with the Nope sets. Also, last time they got you got to go on the Nope sets, not this time. Three Amigos was right here, Nacho Libre. I think that was Nacho's apartment right there. For I remember the previous tour when I was out here three or four months ago. Me and Sean Clark did a video where he walked around and they were kind of explained it. So I got to walk around this area. 
Backlot access. Better remember this place. Maybe do that thing where they say, drinks are on me. <laughs> Here's some for hired here. Here's the Lion State got signs. Fired we didn't stop. On the same day. There was a recreation of the Lion State, State signs from Back to the Future right there. Uh, Clint Eastwood and from what I heard, the original ones were thrown They're away, but they recreated them. The they were right back there. I wish I would have known that. I walked over and looked uh, up. Colonial, 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 Colonial Street. Colonial Street. Colonial Street. Colonial Street. Colonial Street. Colonial Street. You got to cross your fingers. Colonial Street. Colonial Street. Colonial Street. Colonial Street. Colonial Street. We're going by Colonial Street. I love seeing all those old videos. I mean, there's a bonus feature on some of the Star Wars. I informed that one of our guests is a diehard psycho fan. So we're going to see if we can swing past the Bates house up ahead here and get a photo in front of this iconic set really quickly before we head back into the theme park for some fun. Surprised we're not walking around. Passing by these pitcher cars once more. That double decker bus actually proved a vital pitcher car inside of our theme park when they filmed an episode of a really great comedy series called Arrested Development. Alright, Mary, what do you think? I'm speechless. <laughs> it's just like, oh, this Alfred Hitchcock horror Bates, Janet Lee. I mean, it's, it was my first horror movie that I watched in the basement of the home I grew up in as a child, all alone in the dark. There, did you see the mom in the window? No, I didn't. Yeah, mom's up in the window. And I knew I was, I knew I was a horror fan at that point. I, so I'm, glad, yeah, I'm, glad the, I'm glad the guide made like okay. a, made a return trip around, because originally we're not going to stop here, but we were like, we want to see a psycho house, so. And as said, it's it's always interesting how every tour is different. Like, this is the first time I was not allowed to walk through, or they didn't take us through, the airplane. Usually, Little Italy and the airplane are like go-tos. Okay, that's the end of the this trolley tour. I think we're supposed to hit the theme park, we're gonna have lunch, and just kind of see where the day leads us. In about a half hour, we're gonna have lunch right over here in, the, in this little area here, the Moulin Rouge area. You guys want to give me your thoughts? What are your thoughts on uh, the tour and the price of the tour and what you expected? I'm trying to get not just my own thoughts, but everyone else I'm friends with here on their opinions. I've done the tour before and it was a little lacking. Today? A little lacking. For the price. What was, how much did we pay for this? Close to 500 bucks a piece. Right. And it was, I did the same tour for half the price two years ago got to do so much more. Right, so okay. It, it was a little lacking. Okay. Yeah, for me, it was a first time thing. I've never been here. I've watched tons of, t tons of videos on YouTube. And for 500 bucks, I mean, there at the end, he pulled the uh, Psycho House. That was pretty That was cool. nice, yeah. That was a nice little add-in. Do that for Mary. Shout out to yeah. the tour guy for doing lapping back around. Yeah, I mean, but I enjoyed it. I mean, it's a lot of money for what we got. Yeah. I wish we would have seen a little more. So, I'm just trying to put it out there into the universe to let people to know exactly the price differential. Make your own decision, but yeah. It sounds like every tour is different. Every tour is it's different. Kind of like Forrest Gump, Monster right. Chocolates, you never know what you're doing. What else would you have wanted to see? You, so you saw the one thing you wanted to see. Is there anything else you wanted to see? The number one thing I wanted to see. I wanted to see the Back to the Future Courthouse Square, of course, one of my favorite movies. I would have liked to have been able to walk around the wreckage. They showed us the wreckage. Yeah. From Usually the they do. I was really, I really was bizarre. They wouldn't have. Disappointed didn't. that didn't happen. Honestly, my dream would be to just have somebody take me back there and leave me alone for five hours. I know. They <laughs> that won't, would be yeah. My that rarely happens. Hey, Rhodes. Well, you look hungry. We are hungry. You are, yeah, you're from where? All right, we're being taken to our seat for a little gourmet meal, buffet meal style. And then uh, we got some broccoli here. We got some uh, rice, some curry meat there. We got some asparagus, mashed potatoes, potato, regular, mashed potatoes and regular potatoes, some pasta, some tortellini. Big bake, what'd you get? Oh man, I've got a little bit of pizza, some teriyaki chicken, some salmon, some curry with rice, yeah. pasta, a little salad. I went Tex-Mex kind of on my salad. I did regular classic with a little bit of Caesar mix in there. So yeah. mixing it up. And then Nerd Locations really has the goulash going on here. I've never seen anything quite like Complete that. Complete goulash. I got curry, french fries, pizza, and <laughs> the, like the mountain of fries. Yeah, I just threw them on there. I was ready to go. God, I thought it was Biffin's first. <laughs> Watch out for that guy. 
All right, back up in the breakfast area, Nerd Locations is talking to guest services and see if we could get back over to Colonial Street. I think maybe he might be able to work some magic and just say that we weren't didn't get kind of what we expected. We're gonna see maybe something will work out for us. But I'm gonna get another piping on a caffeinated beverage. All right, we're over here at guest services and it appears that they're gonna kind of work it out. I don't know if we're gonna be able to go to Hill Valley, but I think that we might end up having someone take us back down there and show us a little bit more. When you check out the Waterworld show, the cast is made up of actors who are currently working as stunt performers in film and television. Okay. Doing live stage combat, uh, riding jet skis, boats, wow. working with pyrotechnics, all kinds of explosions. It's really a spectacular show. Okay. I'm getting HHN vibes back here. This is where you have to walk for horror nights back yes. through here. Oh, oh really? Hi. Yeah, uh, from one year to another, the houses or the mazes whatever they call them that year are in different places throughout the park but this last year uh this was the path to get to what's called the h the blue wall okay we're gonna drive up in here so <laughs> yeah so this will fill this is the thing i've never seen million this gallons of water it takes three days to fill so this that's where no one bites about the car right there and you can fill it in parts too and uh so this is where they land an airplane and film uh, like so, in Sully. Sully. Exactly. Yep, Sully. They ha so had an airplane right here in the water and then replaced, of course, the blue wall with the um, the skyline of New Jersey on the Hudson River. So that is where Norman never Bates dumped his that. body and the car at the end. Marion's car. Wow. I've never seen this before. That's amazing. Yeah, this is, well, this is even super rare. The VIP tours don't even come this way. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah, this is this awesome. This area would have been the area known as Falls Lake. It's where Norman Falls Lake, yeah. dropped so the car. Was there something on the blue screen at that time? At the time, yes. For because filming? There, oh my uh, gosh, okay, this day's turning out really there good. There wouldn't have been computer generated. Never hurts to images. ask. So like, All right, on Colonial. So, never hurts to ask. Thank you. We'll see you real soon. Do you know what all the houses are? Or do you want to tell us, I guess? I'm familiar with what most Never are, hurts to ask. And express that you're that you didn't get the experience you want. You just never know if it's going to be rectified, and they are really going above and beyond here. So this entire cul-de-sac is actually the reason this street has the name Colonial Street because there used to be a Colonial Mansion right over here, but now uh, this that's where they filmed the last scene of the last episode of Superstore, right in that yard, and then that house. Somebody phrased it this way yesterday, and I thought it was charming. Is it actually has two tree houses on that lot. The one that you can plainly see right out here in the yard. Yeah. Uh, and then the house itself actually has a giant eucalyptus tree growing right through the middle of it. Oh my gosh. So some of these houses, of course, are used strictly for filming the outside. Right. Whereas some uh, are what's called semi-practical. There are parts of the insides that you can use for filming. Some that are partially decorated. Some have a usable first floor and then stairs that lead up to basically nothing. Um, is this from anything? This the, uh, is a house actually that was rebuilt for during Desperate Housewives because the house that was here prior to this one uh, was in disrepair. It had been here for a very long time. And so a tornado was written into oh, the yes, plot I remember. To, to knock that house down and build this one in its, uh, in its spot. This one here, 1436, this is uh, often recognized from all of the Ace Hardware commercials. Yeah. Oh, yep. wow. This is the Ace Hardware house. This was actually Walter's house in the Burbs, which was right here because right. the cul-de-sac was here. But that literally And they shifted exploded. it. Yeah. yeah. So the cul-de-sac over there was down here? Well, when they filmed the Burbs, they made this the cul-de-sac, yeah. and this house here was right here. And you oh. couldn't go past that. Right. It was kind of weird. Yeah, I, there was nothing behind it or what was supposed to look like nothing. And then the Burbs house, Tom Hanks house was here, but this it's gone obviously. Right, because that house they actually blew up the real Oh the yeah the Klopex house. This is the Klopex um, was here, Tom Hanks uh, house was there. Bree, and then the guy that was in the uh, Bruce Dern's yeah. character was the right there. Actually has a restroom in it. And so then Corey Feldman's house was right there. So it's actually got like which is also the monstrous guys. house. Kind of. Let's have a look inside Shut actually. up and paint your GD house. <laughs> We'll head into the front door. We'll let us this, in. Is this is where the Klopex house was, right here. Wow. I would call this, this is where he pulls out. This is where he pulls out and beats the hell out of the trash can. <laughs> right here. <laughs> and Tom Hanks and them are over there. He's like, I've never seen that. I've never seen someone pull up to their another driveway, be, take their trash, beat the hell out of it with a stick. I've, I've, I've never seen that. 
And this is where uh, Bruce Stern falls off the roof. And that's where yeah, Corey is, yeah. Feldman's house is over there. Yeah. All right. This is, this inside, dude. It never hurts to ask. Uh, you could decorate this wall so that if you pointed a camera oh my gosh. this way and framed out the, the plywood in the other room, it would look like you were in a furnished house. Wow. Oh, there actually is bathrooms in here. Yeah, these are usable restrooms. High ceilings for... Cameras. Lighting equipment, cameras, yeah, absolutely. There's also a, a usable backyard that we can have a look at. Here. Oh my gosh, the backyard, the backyard. Let's see if I can see the, the telephone. Patio furniture, but also recently for a very, very top secret, like so top secret, I literally can't tell you what it is. Oh my, there's the power pole from the Burbs. What? That Duke, that uh, he, he, the guy falls off right there. That's the actual power pole that he got electrocuted on. That's a good eye. I've never even noticed that. Wow. That's the one he like fall like gets shocked from right there. Wow. <laughs> it's still there. All these years later, it's still there. Holy cow. That is wild. You never noticed that before? I've never noticed that. Well, we don't very often come back here on the tour. Oh yeah, my. Yeah. This has been used recently, honestly. This is the back of Tom Hanks' house Star right Star there. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Holy cow. All right, that's epic. Dude, that's the, that's the electrical power pole that, that falls, it gets electrocuted right there. Oh, that is it. Now this is Tom Hanks' house? Yeah, this is the back of Tom Hanks' house. Or we can go through the driveway right over here. <laughs> so a lot of the things about this house or uh, this street that is uh, the pavement the sidewalks the driveways the basic structure of the house if you've seen the burbs this is where the garbage truck was where they're dumping all the trash out right here uh, coming up this house is i know i gotta get the bird. absolutely uh, this is where he raises the flag here. It's rumored to be the house from the Ted prequels. Though, though that hasn't aired yet. The television series, the prequel to the movies. Ooh. Sorry, I didn't hear that part. This hasn't aired yet, but it's rumored to be the house. Okay, yeah, so the, this um, the this house is completely different, but this was Tom Hanks' house in the Burbs. Klopex house right here. And there is that telephone pole there. And this yellow and stone house, this is... Uh, the house where uh, Adam, this is his house in the boat. Yeah, this was uh, Bruce Dern's house. There's that scene where he like has the has the weapon on top of the roof, blasts it off, falls down over here. Feldman's like, that was awesome, pizza dude. Feldman's room was right there in the burbs. But obviously, you know, Desperate Housewives is like a huge huge movie too. Oh. This is also the house where Brian Cranston lived in, in the movie Why Him. Are you okay. Me? No, no, no. It's this one right behind us. And this is the remake of Leave It to Beaver House too, right? Wasn't yes. it like the, the remake? Why him? That and then this was where the car Hey Pinocchio! The Burbs drives up into there. And I believe this is the Animal House house, or maybe that and one you is. Obviously noticed 1313 Mockingbird Lane. Yeah. This is originally the house from the Monsters. It got a bit of a facelift though when Desperate Housewives came to town. Is that the Animal House house or is that one? Do you know, I'm not sure. I think sure, it might actually. be that one. Well, this is the house. So this was Gabby's house on Desperate Housewives. And uh, that's uh, Eva Longoria's character. And then it was also the house from Harvey, the Jimmy Stewart movie. Harvey, yeah. 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 This is Animal House. I'm not sure. We're not, we can't confirm. And then this was the neighbor in the burbs. This is where the car crashes in. And I believe you could even see that same kind of window style just even in the burbs. And one thing I've always heard in Back to Future Part 2 when Marty has a leather jacket on and the binoculars and he's going to where Biff lives with his grandma. Going to get my car, Grandma! And he's like walking along that when Biff has the ball and he throws the ball up on the ledge. Most of that was on Bushnell in South Pasadena. But the opposite sides, where this was what I've always heard, never confirmed it, where Marty is on the other side of the street, 
was actually right here on Colonial. That's what I've always heard, right along there. Marty McFly, somewhere in that. So they actually do go inside of Rumsfield's right up here. Hey, Rumsfield! That's where him and his wife go right in here. Look at this. <laughs> And then across the street, Tom Hanks' house, been redone. Walter's house, which would have been in the middle of the street going that way, making the cul-de-sac. Absolutely freaking incredible. Now, honestly, there is just so much history at Universal Studios Hollywood, but I would think, you know, Town Square, Hill Valley, obviously, and Courthouse Square, first Twilight Zone episode, Back to the Future, Gremlins, all that. And then second to that, which probably on par with that, so much filming history here on Colonial Street, 1313 Mockingbird Lane behind me. A lot of people, when you do the, the tour now, they're always gonna mention Desperate Housewives because it's the most current thing. But there's just a plethora of things that were filmed right here on this street. Hundreds, if not thousands of productions that you've probably seen and didn't realize some of your favorite characters are walking right down this road or using these facades and these interiors. Look at the size of this manhole. All right, this is definitely redeeming the entire tour. This is just awesome. The driver of the van, the tour guide. It's just the other one was so, I think it was so hectic. I think everybody else on the tour just wanted to kind of get up to the theme park, but it worked out well. I think the Matlock house, yeah, it was the Mat one of the Matlock house was over there. from this side but uh, you'll come up the hill in the other direction is there a way we could drive up this hill up this hill yeah right here. into the driveway this is the house of a thousand that's right spot, right. spot two yep, where bill mosley ends the guy's life over here on the corner that's right the that's door right. that's also where i will you're always love you was saying inside let's there let's look inside this let's is go actually in. really special yeah yeah, yeah. oh my I've never been yes the so chicken ranch we got elm street and the boo radley down there and so right over here is where Bill Mosley and the cop are in House of a Thousand right here. There's like all those like stuff was set up. And this is where Dolly Parton sings to Burt Reynolds. Let's not head into the door, but okay. we can have a look right Let's look in the door, yeah. This is where Dolly sang, I will always love you. Inside here. On those steps right there. Right here. Can we look in the door? Let's head up the porch and we can look in the door. Just don't go in the house. Okay. Because truth be told, the houses are not meant to be inhabited, so there's this no is code. The that house of a thousand. To. Oh. Yeah. The house itself, this being a practical set, one you can use to film both <laughs> in and out, is really extraordinary. This that is. is crazy. This whole house, when it was used for Best Little Horror House in Texas, also used to be on a hinge, like a dollhouse. Yeah. So you could open the house up. And also Beethoven. Beethoven, Beethoven was yeah. here. I recognize that staircase. Nerd locations doing all the classic <laughs> poses here at the Horror House. <laughs> that is awesome. Man, I have wanted to stand up here for years. Uh, do you know, that's a great question. The outside was definitely used as the Firefly House in House of a Thousand Corpses. I don't know that they used the inside. The inside is absolutely from Best Little World. Oh yeah, because she was on the banister Standing singing. right there. Yeah. Oh my uh, gosh. Like Dolly Parton's I Will Always Love You. This is the inside of the Best Little World. Dolly Parton's still. That just blows my mind. And then, yeah, it's kind of an unknown one, but yeah, right here. Bill Mosley. House of a Thousand, the Firefly House. Yeah, this look, they made this look like a real road and all this was like kind of shacks and, dil and dilapidated stuff. Where's the lineup? It, I can't line it up because I wasn't prepared for this, but it's somewhere right in here. Gotcha. I mean, you can definitely notice if you watch the movie, you can see all that. Unbelievable, it's turned out to be a good day. Also, yeah, Beethoven. <laughs> Nerd locations trying to match it up. And then Boo Radley's. This is freaking great. Look at this. How often are you going to get that angle? This area was 
Okay, they're going to drive us back by the Lion Estate recreation signs. Right there. Oh, of course. We'll get the right angle, though, so we can get a picture. That's blocked. That's all right. We can get to the, the side of it over here okay. so we can get an angle where you can see. From the way I understand it, these are recreations. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you got the Lion Estates, but then over here it actually shows officially licensed exact recreations of original Lion Estates gates from Back to the Future were commissioned where we're going back, Joe Wasser and Ken were displayed throughout the long weekend of 30th anniversary night. These were created back in October of 2015. They recreated them in 2015 for the We're Going Back event. Okay. <laughs> that's not how they would normally archive the pieces, but somebody might just be a big fan. Yeah. This was a creature from the... Oh, it was in Nope. Right by this lake, you can immediately recognize the fountains and those sound stages in the background. And Nope, all right. Because the opening of that movie takes place in a movie studio. Yeah. It's right here. All right, one last stop. Again, they've been very accommodating. This, would out, this was Alfred Hitchcock's office, 5195. I have driven past this 100 plus times on the regular tram tour and the VIP. But this driver and guide are allowing us to get out here. And you got Hitchcock's silhouette right there. All right, we're now exiting out of here where we had access in there and they were very kind. The guys were very kind. I think the day has been redeemed. Rede totally redeem yourself. Not only did I see the psycho house, but I saw Albert Hitchcock's office. I know, so good. Awesome. I can't believe that. It, today worked out good. Awesome. Today worked out really good. A little slow. Yep. Started a little slow, but ended. Perfect. Probably one of the best VIP tours I've ever done. All of the Desperate Housewives homes. Yeah, the Burbs. The Munsters, the Burbs. They gave us another complimentary water. I had a coffee. Started off, I don't know, started off at a, probably around a D minus, and now it's an A plus. A plus. A plus, 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 plus. Universal Studios come, visit the studio, it gets a complete thumbs up. And if you have an opinion about something, go talk to the VIP yeah. guys. Go talk and be nice and express your grievances. And maybe they'll work it out for you. Yeah. All right, heading back over to my hotel, which is on the other side looking into the park. Uh, I'm not sure what floor those are, but I'm kind of close to the top. I'll show you when I'm up there. And that's going to do it for today. Started off a little rough, but ended up working out for the best. It was actually a really good, good time. And now I know for a future reference to be a little more inform it informed or let them know exactly kind of what you want to see when you're doing the tour it was a good time i'll see you in the next video the vlog is over bonus footage it is kind of incredible though that they show that you're going to see this this would never happen let alone are you going to be able to go in to an area where they are filming something and you're certainly not going to have the beam. <laughs> you're not going to be watching this happen. Man, it would have been nice to go back there, but they were setting up for, for something. As stated, every time I do this, it's a, a total different, totally different experience. See, here's some. This shows that they're filming something. You would never be in an area where they're filming something. So I'm not sure why. That's the case. Oh, I was there, right there. Okay, this we got to see. This is the prop warehouse. We're not allowed to take photos in there, though. That was that makes sense. They didn't want photos inside the prop warehouse. Gourmet dining food on point and express. You can walk on all the rides, which is nice. We did a couple, couple of the rides. It wasn't really a ride day, however, like this. You're never, this is never going to happen. Let's be honest, like, I don't know. That's, yeah. You're not going to see a guy flying out the window, explosion into an airbag with, that's not going to, yeah, that's, that's not, that's not going to happen. That we saw that. That was great. 
all in all, a really good day. Big thank you to the VI Experience crew and team. I had a good time. First it was, yeah, it was a little iffy at first, but it worked out. All right, that's it.